Good morning, Modern Stutters. The Icelandic chicks are all hatched out, so what's next? Well, we got a few things we got to do now, but here they are. Look at the cute little puff balls. We have five of them. Now we need to take the incubator apart, clean it, and then we're going to put one more batch of eggs in there. This will be the last batch we hatch out for this year. Keep our fingers crossed, but this incubator should be a lot easier to clean than our old one. Let's check it out. We'll unplug the cord from the cover. The nice part about this incubator is the fan and the heating element is all up top. There's nothing wrong with that, so I can just set that over here. The other incubator that wasn't working for us anymore had the fan and the heating element on the bottom. So we had to unscrew this, take all the zip ties off, and take the motor out, wash it a little bit because you'd get egg yolks and a bunch of stuff stuck in here and it would smell, and put it to the side so you didn't get it soaked, and then clean the bottom. This one, let's get the eggs out of here and we'll show you how we're going to clean it. Now we've had some modern steaders ask, what do you do with the eggs that aren't fertile or don't hatch? We just put all of them in an egg carton, we bring them outside, and we put them in the compost pile. We might as well get some use out of them. They're not trash. We can compost them and break them down and use them to grow next year's food. The eggshells are loaded with calcium. All plants need calcium, so that's a good source of calcium right there in the compost pile. Take this outside. Bring it outside right by our hose. First, we just want to give it a good rinsing. Now this plastic tray just comes out, which is nice. A little bit of soap in there. Just gonna give it a good scrubbing with my fingers. You get all the little grooves, so you wanna get in there the best you can. Put our tray back in there and just get it in the soapy water. Give it a scrub down with your hand. This incubator is so easy to clean. This next step is very important. Believe it or not, sunlight is nature's best disinfectant. So we're gonna leave this outside in the outdoor kitchen because there's no roof for the day because it's gonna be nice and sunny and just let the sunlight bleach everything and kill anything if there's anything bad in here, which I don't think there is. But to be on the safe side, we'll just leave this outside in the sun. We'll just leave the incubator tray outside in the sun and we'll let the natural sunlight disinfect it for us. It's like nature's bleach. It works amazing. Tonight when we come home from work, we'll come out here, we'll grab it, and all three of us can put some Icelandic eggs in there and start hatching our next batch. We will grab our eggs and our eggshell cartons because remember, these are compostable too. Don't worry, we're gonna compost the eggshell carton and everything. I'm not gonna reuse them. That would just be gross. We'll just get a good hole going here in the middle. It's pretty well composted right in there. Got a good hole going. And then we're just gonna drop these right in. And you just want to backfill it all. Sometimes people just make too much out of composting. Just put it in your compost pile and let it compost. If it takes longer than you think it should, it's okay. Guess what? Composting is natural. It's called rotting. It's gonna happen. Whether you can do it in a few months or if it takes you a year, don't worry about it. 
put it out here in a compost pile and let the stuff rot. Have a couple of compost piles going so you can have stuff like eggs, eggshells, bones, meats, feathers in a pile that's going to take a while to decompose and then have another compost pile with grass, hay clippings, leaves and stuff that's going to compost quicker if you want that for the garden in six months. And then this one you can have in a year. All right, the incubator's outside. We're letting Mother Nature do the work for us, cleaning it while we're at work. Now we need to go get a chicken to put in the crock pot so we can let the crock pot do the work for us cooking our dinner while we're out working. Those are our Cornishes. Let's grab a Bard Rock. Let's have a Bard Rock chicken for dinner. Look how nice and yellow that is. So the way we cook our chickens, we just put them in our crock pot frozen. Don't worry, we take them out of the packet. Now this is our fast food. We just put the cover on it. We'll stick it on low. And when we come home from work, that's gonna be falling off the bone, ready to go. You couldn't get chicken nuggets from McDonald's that quick and easy. No way, by the time you drove there, sat in line at the drive-thru, and then got it, you, yeah, it would take longer than that, because put it on low, we're gonna come home, clickety-click, it's gonna be ready. That's fast food. You could put some butter on there, you could put a little bit of salt and pepper, whatever you wanted to for seasoning. But being a pasture-raised chicken, you don't need to season it. It's gonna taste delicious all by itself. And now, just like that, we're back. It's time to start cooking dinner. We're gonna go in our refrigerator and we're gonna grab some roasted potatoes we made the other night. And when we make stuff like that that we really enjoy, we batch cook it. Let's go get them. We roasted up some potatoes with onion, garlic, pink Himalayan salt and avocado oil the other day. We've been having them for dinner and breakfast as home fries. Tonight, we're gonna stick them in the oven on 250 and just reheat them. Now since it's getting tight on time, we're just gonna boil some Brussels sprouts. Me and Gina really love them roasted, but Olivia loves them boiled or steamed in water with a little bit of salt. So we're gonna do that tonight. We'll make Olivia happy tonight, right? Why not? We really enjoy the Woodstock brand frozen vegetables. They're non-GMO. I find just a little bit of pink Himalayan salt just enhances the flavor makes a huge difference. We'll just cover those up and let them steam for a little while. Now comes the easy part with the chicken. It's been cooking on low all day long. All we're gonna do is pull back the skin and remove the meat. Cooking it this way all the meat just wants to fall right off the bone, which is nice. It just makes it nice and easy and everything comes apart. You'll see. Ready? Bada boom, bada bing. If you want to save the wishbone, it's easily, you can easily do that. Spin it around and I'll show you this one. You're getting the breast meat and the tender all in one shot here. I guess I can't say all in one shot, but it's right there. Look at that. Most of that meat you've gotten already. We leave everything in the crock pot because afterwards we'll make a bone broth with it. See how nice and yellow that already is? Wait till we add some more water and make a nice broth. Now all I do to make my broth, so I just bring it over to the sink, I fill it up with cold water. We have well water, so we don't have to worry about fluoride or any bad stuff in our water. I just fill this whole crock pot right up with water right to the very top. 
See all that goodness? Mm, mm, mm. I just put the cover on it and we let it simmer for 24 hours on low. Since it's gotta be simmering for so long, we don't wanna add any vegetables right now, like onions or celery. We'll do all that tomorrow, like a few hours before we're gonna strain it off. We'll cut up some celery and some onions and put it in there for flavoring. You can add some salt at this point if you'd like. No. Okay. Cook the Brussels sprouts this way just for you. Yeah. I had one of mom's tiny ones in there. I definitely like the bog rock meat better. It's got more flavor, I think. You get more meat off the other one, you know? Right, you do get more meat from the corn. Just, but these birds were also a lot. It's more enjoyable. It is. I'll just take this out, and you can fill, oh. drop it. You can do it right here, and it just fills the trays. Oh, okay. Put about half of the jar and worth of water. Two more. How do you get that egg turner? I'll stick your tongue out. So let's put the eggs in before we plug it in and put the cover on. How many eggs? I don't know. You haven't been counting? No. Man. So these have been stored facing, pointy side down, but we've also been storing for a little bit. Right. So Some of them. Fertility, so. Right. Some of them might not be good because we have been storing them for so long. This is another egg. That's another egg? Yeah. You see that one will hatch? Now we're just going to plug the egg turner in. That's it. Simple, simple. So we like this egg incubator. Just, it is a little bit noisier than the other. Yes, but it works. But it works good. good. You can see the chicks when they hatch out of that part. You know, I mean, you can see a little bit for the top. But... Let's see, is it back on day zero? Oh. Nope. So we gotta probably hold reset, maybe. So to reset the day counter on the Wright's Farm product incubator, show them how to do it, Olivia. Very good. No, we gotta hold the plus and the minus for six seconds. Then you'll hear it beep. Three. Oh, there you go. Everything's all eights, and it'll take a second, and then it resets itself back to zero, zero for days. We are loving our Wright's Farm product incubator. It's working out really good for us. If you guys want to get one or get anything from Coops and more, I'm going to leave a link down in the description below. There is a coupon code. If you put that in, you're going to get 10% off your order. Ah, oh, you get some cute chickies. Yeah. They're so cute. They're quiet when you're holding them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Look at me. Shy. Look at me. Too close. Look at how small this one is. Oh, I want to hold the tiny one. Oh no, you don't want to be held. You guys are dusty from the shell, oh. from the 
Shavings. This one's name is Shell. <laughs> he had eggshell stuck to him, so we're gonna name him Shell. You got him? Her? Thanks guys for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye.